When I was 23, I became the uh, youngest director of bands at a major university in the United States, at Texas Christian University in Fort Worth. I have been institutionalized ever since. My life has been teaching and involved in university work. After arriving on this campus in 1959, during this month of August, by the way, and seeing the extremely ominous signs all around me regarding jazz study at this university, including approximately one full year of telephone calls at all hours of the day and night telling me that, quote, you're going to go to hell teaching that jazz. I wrote my first resignation letter. In fact, I wrote it the second week I was at North Texas. I decided after long and careful study and discussions with my dear family to stay and to fight for what I believed in. Speaking of the family, I digress for a second and tell you something of great joy to us that my son has just been appointed assistant principal clarinetist with the San Francisco Symphony for the coming year which is a marvelous thing for a young man. I am happy that we have been able to survive, that's the right word, with jazz studies more and more becoming acceptable, not just in North Texas, but almost everywhere. I am proud that I have never compromised my standards and that I have not lost my belief in the validity of jazz education work. I have tried with every fiber in my body to avoid doing anything outrageous which would minimize, cheapen, or give any ammunition to those who feel that we are only interested in the showbiz part of this work. To this day, there are many of these people. They're everywhere. If you doubt it, Come listen to some of the phone calls and some of the letters, read the letters I get. Last November, even before our concert dedicated to Stan Kenton, I wrote to Dean Myers as follows. This is strictly my own choice. I'm not ill, not that I know of. I still legally have a few years of teaching remaining. But this is dated November the 12th, 1979. After long and careful consideration, my tentative plans call for my resignation to become effective August 31st, 1981. Parenthetically, that's exactly one year from this day. My goal has been to serve this university and its students at the highest level possible and to do all that I could do to help to gain the acceptance for jazz education which it deserves in my estimation. I'm still reading my letter to the dean. I have tried to earn that respect capitalized, earn that respect by our actions and by our high level of performance at all times. I have made many mistakes. In parenthesis, numerous detractors will verify this without too much prompting. But I can assure you and all who have been interested in our work that every mistake was, quote, of the head and not of the heart, as some wise person once stated. It seems to me that the time has come for someone new to bring some fresh air to the program without the scars of the past, constantly haunting that person who will accept the responsibility for directing the jazz education work. It is my fervent hope that one will be chosen who truly is an educator, capitalized educator, and not one whose priorities are based upon the commercial and or show business aspects which seem to be considered by some to be important to this work. It is a good feeling for me to know that I can face every student that I have ever had, junior high, senior high, university, and state entirely truthfully, quote, I have never tried to use you or your work for my own profit or ego. I have tried not only to challenge the best of the students, but I have tried to live it as an example to them. 
I thank my colleagues who understood that our work was not meant to take anything away from this school of music. I wish there could have been more of these. Needless to say, Dean Myers, your fine support has been a great source of comfort to me and to our jazz education program. While we are all guilty of judging each other at times, often without knowing the full details of any given situation, I shall be content to let history and God judge me for my work. I have no plans whatsoever, no commitments of any kind, and will face this new adjustment in my life knowing that many things will be changed for me and for my family. I hope to be able to devote my remaining days to my family to further study, reading, travel, possibly to opportunities to share my experiences with colleagues. One thing I want to do is write a book, which I've been working about three years, getting the notes together, and it's going to be, I think it will be historically important. I would hope so. Uh, going on with the letter, it would be my sincere wish to quietly make this transition without fanfare of any kind. Because of the public nature of my work, this will probably not be possible. However, that is how I would prefer to handle it if given the opportunity. In closing, as I have stated so many times before to you, your consideration is appreciated as always. Leon Breeden. If fate does not step in to prevent it, I will close the circle of my work at North Texas on August 31st of 1981, one year from now. I sincerely hope that this year will be one of great accomplishments in your jazz work as all other years have been. I don't know of a year we have not had some fantastic musicians. We have not made some tremendous history. We have not done some marvelous things. I can look back on hundreds, probably thousands of students and remember that I was a small part of their lives, even briefly. And they made me more complete and more full. I want to walk out with my head held high and with the knowledge that I truly made some contributions to the welfare of this university and to the students in the jazz department. In the coming months, I will work diligently to get our jazz archives, which will be absolutely fantastic. We have tapes of bands you cannot believe that will go to the library. Much of my personal things will go to the library. I'm preparing a summation of about 25 notebooks, which will tell my story in fact and not just hearing it third person. Just read these letters for yourself. Read these memos and see for yourself how it was to have been back there during those days as we were building this program. I thank you for your attendance today. Uh, if you have not auditioned, you must do so now. The gentlemen have told you where you, your auditions will be. Please don't strike out your chances by not auditioning. You won't be considered otherwise. Meeting adjourned.